Hi, and welcome to the Jim and Sam Town Square. I'm Chris Cangella, and I usually don't typically do these intros. That's because my co-host, you know, who does the intros, he's on vacation. You know my co-host, Scott King, the guy that's really great at writing and has written those articles about the guys in Forbes magazine. Well, Scott is taking a little time off, and he's on vacation this week, but we'll get a chance to hear from him a little bit later. So, we're recapping week four of June 2023, and it's a week that saw some great things. We saw the birth of the vibe. We saw a discussion about adult Disney fans. And of course, we learned a lot more about intern Cooper. But let's start it off with some stuff that we learned about Jim and what he was doing this week. Turns out Jim's girlfriend was on vacation as well this week and away from the apartment. So what does Jim do? Well, Jim is watching a lot of the shows that he wouldn't get an opportunity to watch when his girlfriend is around because they watch shows together, right? And uh, so Jim was watching Succession. And, uh, you know, Jim kind of poo-pooed that earlier, uh, but he's back in and I think he's already up to uh, season four. Now, I started Succession only this year and I can't get into it and I can't tell if it's maybe because Jim kind of ruined it for me. Or is I just hate them, and maybe that's why I can't get into it. But I'm trying. I'm really trying to get back into it. And then Jim also is watching a show called To Catch a Smuggler. And it's about, uh, you know, guys that are smuggling things through airports and whatnot. And in foreign countries, it's always, you know, cocaine or whatever. And in the U.S., it's usually, you know, fruits and vegetables um, and making sure that, you know, those things don't pollute the rest of our fruits and vegetables and get you know, viruses or any kind of insects or something like that. And then Travis brought up that, you know, I'm wondering if they're looking for lightsabers also. So maybe smuggling is part of of that, you know, smuggling a lightsaber to go back to Orlando to take pictures with them. I don't know. But Jim mentioned that, you know, while his girlfriend's away, that he might have become a new room decorator. Maybe some of those kiss posters are going up in the living room. And other things are coming down. So this is perfect for next week. I hope we get to hear about what his girlfriend thought of the new room decor, if you will, and what Jim actually did while she was gone. Jim was talking that he's doing a lot of these things to kind of not partake in his destructive behaviors of his past life. So a lot of these things is just him keeping busy and, you know, trying new things and, uh, and not going back to the tugging, if you will. Uh, We learned a lot about Sam over the weekend. Uh, Sam went to uh, Bill Burr's uh, show in Bridgeport, and it turns out that uh, Sam ran into Kenny, Club Club Soda Kenny, easy for me to say. Yeah, he ran into Club Soda Kenny before the show, and, uh, and it was a great, great show. And it turns out maybe Sam is sponsoring Bill Burr's tour. I'm not sure. Because he filled us in that before the show, when he saw Club so- Soda Kenny, uh, Kenny said that he'll be doing the inter- announcement to get Bill out on stage. And Kenny um, went out and, and did the announcement, and this is what he said. <clears throat> Primetime Sam Roberts presents Bill Burr. So I guess Sammy is sponsoring Bill Burr. And you know that just led to another discussion about backstage passes and how, you know, you want to use those passes because you want to get a chance to see, you know, your friends or even guys you looked up to when you were kids. And now you're kind of a person of means and you might get a backstage pass to go check them out. Well, you want to go see them. And sometimes you just don't feel comfortable in using them. You might have not the right kind of pass to get you where you need to go. Sam told a story about going to a WWE event where he would have, you know, almost full reign. And he took his son, but then someone questioned his son uh, where they were going with his son that Sam didn't have the right guest pass for, you know, pass for him, which doesn't make any sense. He's, you know, what, six years old? How does that kid have a guest pass? But, you know, they're talking about having the right kind of passes. And it's, it's tough when you're trying to, you know, get into places where you want to be, but then you feel uncomfortable about being there. So who knows? But Tuesday... Tuesday show led us to a great, a great break. They talked about the bashing of adult Disney fans. 
And these are adults that go to the Disney parks without any kids. So maybe they go alone, which is kind of creepy. Or maybe they're going as a couple that don't have kids. And I guess that would be okay. But they're bashing them. And I guess there's a lot of internet bashing of these adult Disney fans. And Travis, who is our favorite adult Disney fan, uh, well, you know, that brought up Sam having to tell Cooper about the lightsaber story that we alluded to earlier. And, uh, and Travis said that, you know, if money was no object, he would be going to Disney about once a month. Don't know if he'd be doing the lightsaber thing every time. Maybe he'd have seven of them by now if money was no object. So Cooper, you know, found on on uh, the internet when having this discussion about Disney, there is a, a, a site that's uh, called Mouse Mingle, which is a dating app for adult Disney fans. And they're going through it and looking at all the people that are on it and what those people looked like. And Sam brought up, wouldn't it be great if they saw a picture of Travis and his profile there, you know, and maybe going under pseudonym or another name and all the things that he loves about Disney. It would just be hilarious when they're scrolling through and they go, oh, who's that? That's Travis. That's crazy. And then, you know, later on, I saw that Travis put on Instagram a story and uh, it was these two guys that were at a famous landmark in a foreign country. And the one guy said, oh, it looks good, but I think the one at Epcot is better of this landmark. And his friend was dumbfounded. He's like, this one's the original. This, this, the other one was a duplicate of this one. So it, it was quite, you know, quite disgusting, but very funny that, uh, that we saw that. And, you know, it, it just, adults going to Disney, it's, it's not a bad thing, you know, but maybe you should be with your kids. I don't know. Let's get like a firsthand experience about adults going to Disney. Let's check in with my favorite adult. And one who's at Disney right now, Scott King. Scott? Thank you, Chris, for throwing to me. I appreciate it. I am here live in Orlando. As, as you can see, you hear children screaming. That's how you know you're at Disney. Mine were as well. We've done a lot. Of course, I'm right by the Town Square Theater because more children screaming. It's Disney. Because at the Town Square in Disney is where all of Disney's truths are unearthed, just like the Jim and Sam podcast. I could do this somewhere else, but there'd be children screaming there as well. Um, I, you know, on, on Tuesday's show, they were talking about can an adult go to Disney by themselves? And I think uh, absolutely. Just don't be a jerk. Uh, if you're by yourself and you're an adult, if you're wearing Disney garbs, that's fine. But don't take uh, 10 pictures with the same character in front of a bunch of families and children that are waiting to do that. So. That's my two cents, Troy uh, and Sam, you know, their favorite place in Orlando. Where you can only eat in Orlando is Hooters. I haven't been there. Um, I hope to do that. So back to you, Chris. Thanks for throwing to me, man. And thanks for holding the fort down. And I will see you soon, partner. Thanks, Jim and Sam fans. Scott King, everyone. Well, at least Scott's at Disney with his family. I wonder if he'll stop by Epcot later and maybe check out a band or something. Who knows? But the guys were talking about Epcot and how they would love to go see some bands. And one of those bands is Sugar Ray. I guess Sugar Ray performs there quite a bit. And they were wondering how good it would be. And they listened back and it wasn't too bad. And then they talked about Sugar Ray before they made it really big. They had a harder sound, which I had no idea. I, I just know Sugar Ray from, you know, their popular uh, tracks when they sold out. Right. But um, yeah, I uh, I never knew about Sugar Ray like that. So they're going through all the other ones. And then I'm not sure if this band is going to going to be at Epcot, but they talked about Hanson, right? The the three brothers that did the Mbop song, right? And uh, Jim said back in the day that he wasn't sure if the the boy drummer was a girl or not. So he, he wasn't really sure, which led him to telling a story about when he was in church as a young man, had to be pretty young because he hadn't sold his soul to Satan yet. But when he was at church, he saw a girl and thought she was really attractive, and it turned out to be a, a boy. And uh, and the guys in the studio said, oh, okay, so that's where it started. Jimmy, crazy Jimmy. But, you know, not an Epcot band that I know of is going to be there, but they also later in the week talked about uh, Fallout Boy and doing a remake of We Didn't Start the Fire. And uh, there was mixed reviews in the studio about, is it good? Is it not good? And Jimmy just wanted to make sure that they, you know, mentioned 9-11, you know, and the, the attack on the United States. 
And uh, and I guess they did down the down the road in the song. Jimmy thought it was uh, Billy Joel's song was in chronological order of the events, but I think they kind of found out that it's loosely chronological in the old one. But I don't know. It, it wasn't bad. It sounded pretty good. I wasn't too upset with it. I wanted to hate it, but I didn't. So who knows? Who knows, really? Then one of my favorite things that they talked about this uh, this week is the vibe. The vibe is open, people. So what the vibe is is a is a kiosk and vending machines on their break in their break room. And before in the pandemic, they used to go up to the break room and they'd have free snacks, right? Treats galore because I think they wanted people that were working to be rewarded for being in there, not you know being out. So they used to get free snacks there. And that's dwindled, and now Sirius teamed up with another uh, company, and they're selling snacks. And these, these snacks aren't really cheap, and they don't seem to have a lot of quantity inside them. So like a bag of chips with not too many chips in there is selling for a dollar or two. So not a really good deal, but that didn't stop old Sammy Roberts. You know, Sammy doesn't mind spending money for, a, you know, getting a Denver boot off his car in a CVS. And I guess he didn't mind spending for, you know, I think he got Pop-Tarts and some other things uh, at the old vibe and uh and the guys gave him some grief about that they were also thinking that maybe they should go to costco and get their own treats you can buy bulk treats and then selling them themselves in the in the vibe area and uh, making a better profit and making probably people happy that work at serious a little bit more um then nicole nicole from the morning mashup was up there at the same time sammy was looking at the vibe She did an Instagram story. She was so upset because they're charging them for these snacks when the morning mashup show really worked hard. And the guys gave her grief about that because they do, you know, the hits for about an hour where Jim and Sam and the boys are in there for about three hours talking the whole time. But uh, Nicole came into the studio and and, and defended herself and, and did a pretty good job of that. At least she has the guts to come in and talk with the boys afterwards. And uh, and they had fun looking back at that video that she shot. Then they found out that the, <clears throat> excuse me, the kitchen on 37, on floor 37, had free snacks and that they wanted to get those free snacks. So guess what? They took another break. They took a break. They ran up there and they got their free snacks. Troy, I think, got a cup of soup, you know, a noodles cup of soup. He said he wasn't even hungry, but he just wanted to get something. Sam got stuff. Jim got stuff. They raided the kitchen on 37 and they were a little concerned because they saw what they said was a vibe soldier. Don't know what the vibe soldier is, but maybe somebody that was working with the company in the vibe, walking the halls and they thought they're going to get busted for, you know, not talking well about the vibe. Um, And uh, we'll see what that turns out. If the vibe is able to uh, last this, uh, this mean talk from our, our show, and, and of course, the morning mashup who deserve snacks, you know, for a little bit cheaper. After that, they got into a lot of stuff about the Titanic sub, you know, the Titan submersible that unfortunately came to demise uh, probably shortly after descending into uh, into inspecting that, uh, that wreckage. And uh, it came about that there's a lot of controversy now surrounding that, as usually there is, right, in, in these kinds of things. But there was controversy about the company, you know, the sub company posting a job for a pilot of the sub shortly after, like early this week. Did they really post a job saying we have an opening for a pilot? Not sure if that's in good taste. And then they talked about, you know, was this event, the the sub that, you know, imploded and then the Russian coup, was that part of a, a bigger uh, distraction to take away from the Hunter Biden, you know, conviction in case? could be i don't know and then of course they thought maybe the sub went down as part of uh you know a big hit on those wealthy individuals that were in the sub and it was a way to take them all out i don't know controversies are fun to talk about but i don't know where they usually the truth lies in in what we see and what we heard but they brought the wreckage up and it was kind of sad but i'm done with this story and i think many of you are we got some ufo talk as well i'm not going to go into great detail in here because i'm kind of done with the ufo stuff um, I do like hearing different takes the guys have, but if it takes up a half an hour or more on the show, um, it's tough. It's really tough. And then we learned 
a lot about intern Cooper. And the question came about, is Coop dumb? Not sure. Now, I love this kid. I mean, he is fitting in well. He's very funny. He laughs at Jim's jokes. He, he really goes all in on Jim's jokes. And, uh, and that, that makes me feel good. And it's great having him there because he doesn't know a lot about the past of this show. So these guys get to tell these great stories that we've heard over the years. I mean, Jimmy told his, you know, devil's oath written in blood on his, uh, on his uh, door of his boyhood home of his, you know, his bedroom. That story he told about him calling in the bomb threat to his school. You know, if you think that's funny, start laughing. Okay. And then he talked about having a crush on one of the girls uh, when he was younger and, and asking her, if you want to find out who I am, wear something special the next day. And, and she did, but he never had the guts to go up and tell her. So Jimmy had some great stories. And then of course, I was so happy when this happened, but Sammy brought back his story about his crush on the girl. Turned out the girl likes him. He was notified that the girl likes him. And he said, oh boy, I'm screwed. And never could get past it. It took him about 10 years, he said. It took him about 10 years to get back. So having Cooper, maybe not being quick on the uptake and being new gives us an opportunity to rel relive some of those stories. But we also learned that Cooper um, said he was in some different classes in his high school. Different classes. And uh, and that and this was pretty funny. I thought he was pretty quick on this. He said, yeah, I was in those classes where there were more teachers than students. So... We can all think about that and know which kind of classes those were in. But, you know, he said that uh, he was in high school. He wasn't a great student, so much so that he started Photoshopping his grades over, you know, so if he got a bad grade, he would change that grade via Photoshop. Uh, so when, <clears throat> excuse me, when his parents need a little sip of something here. Sorry, guys. When his parents um, saw his grades, you know, they would think that he did really well, which he did not. Isn't that going to catch up to you too down the road? Like if you have these grades. So I think it did so much so that his parents decided to maybe, you know, send him away for a year before he goes to college. So he took a gap year because he really wasn't ready for school just yet. And then we learned some other great things about Cooper that he slipped a disc in his neck recently from just cracking it. I do that occasionally. You might have even heard that one. But uh, yeah, so he slipped a disc in his neck and, and got hurt that way. And then he uh, he does stand-up comedy. I didn't know that. He's pretty quick. He's got some good lines and he laughs there. So I'd love to see a set. And I wonder if Jimmy will ever get a chance to go see him and, and give us an update. Or maybe the guys will all go and see him. Can you imagine how nervous he'd be if all the guys went and saw him do that? I don't know. All right, we're running out of time, so let's do some things. Let's do some quick hits. Um, they talked about not having a good social compass growing up, making fun of kids you probably shouldn't make fun of, and then also making bad decisions because there's no ramifications and no consequences when you're young. You know, you don't think about that stuff. And Jim told the story about throwing bricks at cars, moving cars, throwing bricks. Crazy. But then it got me thinking... We used to throw snowballs at cars when I was a kid. And uh, my brothers were really good at it. We could be in the backyard and throw them over the house, get them to the front yard where the, you know, where the cars were going down our front street. And then, <clears throat> lucky enough, lucky or unlucky, I don't know, the bus used to go down uh, our street. So we taped up the schedule to the front door. It's, you know, it's 217. That's when the bus is going to come by. So, you know, around 210. We're going out in the backyard and making those snowballs and uh, and chucking them over the uh, over the the house to get to the front yard. Yeah, we called it chucking, chucking snowballs. And my brother told me a story once when he was chucking snowballs, you know, he would always get chased and that was the best thing to get chased and hide and that kind of thing. So as an adult, he had a, some kids were throwing snowballs and hit his car. And so he gave chase, right? Because that's what the kids wanted. And he chased his kid down the alley, he, you know, got him and, and, and cornered him. And the kid was so scared. He goes, you know what you need to do next time? And the kid goes, no, what? He goes, find a better hiding place, place because you're, you got caught. Find a better hiding place. And he let him go. So, you know, we learn from our mistakes and 
that's part about being a kid, right? I just hope that uh, no one really got hurt from anything I did back in the day. Another quick hit, they talked about RFK Jr. and his presidential run. And part of that is him working out with his shirt off. And uh, he is jacked. RFK Jr. is jacked, man. He's 69 and has a better physique than most of us. And uh, so he was incredible. And he did some push-ups, I guess, on camera. And uh, they watched the video. But it turns out that Troy and Travis did more push-ups in one setting than he did. So our guys might be stronger, just hidden maybe. I, you, you know, Troy is a, is working out a lot, but I don't think Travis does. I know his wife is is into it. And of course, his daughter's an athlete, but I don't know how much Travis is doing that. Then another quick hit, we got a caller. This guy, oh my goodness. Chuck from Boston. And Chuck from Boston fancies himself as a as a comic, right? He He's a comic on YouTube is what he he does. And he wanted the guys to check out his comedy bits that he's put up on YouTube. So the one of them was about uh, Soraya, um, you know, how she spilled, I think, soup or some kind of product on her laptop and it's not working. So you got to look at, listen to my bit. So he, they played the bit. Soraya talks about it. And then the guy edited in, no soup for you from Seinfeld. That was the bit. So the guy is a comedian or is he an editor? I think I'm as funny as he is because I can edit like that. And then the rest of his videos on his site are him calling into Opie and Anthony, calling into Jim and Sam, and that's his video, calling into these shows. So he called in to talk about videos about him calling in. So the next video is going to have to be from this one where he called in, right? So I don't know. That leads to the last little quick hit, El Salvador, that max prison down there and the super max prisons in the United States and how scary and gross and horrible they are. And they are there for a deterrent. They don't care if you're happy or not. They want you to be miserable. And those prisons look miserable. But my favorite part is Jim and, you know, his concern over the things that, yeah, are concerning, but not the most concerning, concerning things about being in a supermax prison. He's worried about the toilet usage, of course, right? And sharing sheets, because I guess you check the sheets out. Or you don't check the sheets out. I don't know. But it's about those kind of things that make Jimmy manic about these prison videos. But they had a lot of fun talking about that. All right. We're getting close to the end. So let's get into the guests of the week, our best guests of the week. Our guests, we had four. Three of them came in at the same time. We had Karen Fian, of course. Karen's a great stand-up comedian, as we all know, a good friend of the, of the show. And she has been getting ghosted a lot on dates. And she told a story about one of her dates that uh, Karen has to fake laugh at one of her old dates because this guy thought he was funny and Karen wants to be nice and is fake laughing. But she said it's hard being funnier than your date. And I guess it would be for a lot of stand-up uh, female comics. You know, ask Bonnie. You know, she's funnier than Rich, right? Rich isn't going to like that too much. Then we had uh, with Karen was comic uh, Ian Laren and uh, Lara, and uh, he came in and hung out with Karen, and we found out from him that he got circumcised when he was 15. Not much unlike our Sammy, who got circumcised at 19. So here we are, some high schoolers, or teenagers rather, getting circumcised, and their stories about that. Turned out that Ian said that once he did it, it uh, turned other guys on to the fact that maybe they should do it, and others followed. So that was kind of weird. Then we kind of got a vibe. We've had it before with Karen and Ian. Are they, aren't they kind of thing? And I saw on Instagram after the show that they were together. They posted some things together. So I don't know if they're just really good friends or maybe there is something there. Why not? I mean, Ian's funny. So at least she won't have to fake laugh, right? And then the other guest that day was a guy named Ray DeVito. And I haven't heard of Ray before. before. And it was his first time coming in and being on the show. And, uh, and Ray... He's a he's a card man. He brought in hot sauce. Don't know why. I think he was selling it, but he's never tasted it. So they tasted some of the hot sauce. He told a story about how he broke a toe because he uh, had gout and was running on his bad gout feet um, too soon after, and he broke a toe. Weird story there. He had break dancing on his website, and Travis asked him, "So you break dance?" He goes, yeah, a little bit. Why is it on his website? He just threw it up there. He doesn't break dance. 
very, very weird guy, but I love him. And then he told a funny story about when he was working with Dave Coulier and, uh, and a, a mom and a son came up to him afterwards and say, you know, we really love Dave. Can you see if Dave, could you see if, uh, he could sign our, our ticket stub? And he goes, yeah, I don't mind asking him. So he took it back to Dave and Dave said, I, I really can't do it right now. I'm with my family. I don't have time to do that. So Ray brought it back out to the family, said, I'm sorry, he won't do it, but, but I'll sign it for you. And the mom said, what good is that? So that kind of hurt Ray right, right there. <laughs> and then uh, we found out that, uh, that Ray loves Frankie Valli and all his songs. And yet when they played his songs, he couldn't sing along too well. Karen knew more of the lyrics than Ray. So it turns out Ray may fib a little bit. And you have to dial it in before he gives you the truth, but a good guest nonetheless. And then on Thursday, our final guest of the week was uh, Lily uh, Godfrey, which was um, which is Gilbert Godfrey's daughter. And Lily did uh, 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 an eight-minute um, YouTube uh, documentary about her dad and his uh, hidden talent. And that hidden talent was some artwork that he used to do as a younger man. And how he, everybody has kind of a hidden talent. So she did great. She was, a, you know, she's 16, I think, came on the show, really did a good job. They talked to uh, Gilbert's uh, widow a little bit about how they met and had some great stories. But Lily said, you know, Gil, her dad, Gilbert, was uh, was a different guy at home than he is uh, when he's a comedian, you know, in front of people. So heartwarming stories. So my guest of the week, I'm going to go with Ray. New face, new stories. And uh, just kind of a weird dude. And I'd like to learn a little bit more about him. So Ray was our guest of the week, at least mine. Not sure who Scott's is, but maybe he'll tell us when he comes back. And then last for us is the line of the week. And I have two lines of the week. Um, It goes back to Jim when he was talking about watching that show to catch a smuggler, right? And how he's watching that while his girlfriend's gone. So he says, I love this new show called Catch a Smuggler. And Travis said, yeah, it's a show about Jonathan, Jim's manager. And if you know Jonathan, you know what he might be smuggling. Sam got an assist with that one, too, because he set up Jonathan's tight pants. And that's when Travis said, yeah, it's about Jonathan. So um, that's a good line. But my favorite one, and it came uh, on Thursday's show. You know, they're talking about all their missteps with women, Jim and Sam, when they're younger. But Jim said, you know, Sam does have the ability to get attractive women because uh, there's a vulnerability there that women tune into and that they, they really like Sam because of that vulnerability. And Sam goes, no, it's 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 not that. It's because of my BDE, right? And Jim's so quick, he said, yeah, you're bald, douche, douche. I screwed it up. Can you believe that? Of course, I'm not a comedian. You're bald, douche, douche, bald, douche energy. I can't say it, but Jim said it quickly. Ruined that line of the week, but it was, yeah, you're bald, douche, energy instead of your big energy. Anyway, I butchered the line, but it was a great line and it was so quick and and they laughed a bunch about that. So like Scott said, it is hard to be by yourself and doing this. I know Florentine does a podcast by himself. I have no idea how he can talk to no one. I screw it up all the time and I'm thirsty. I have a lot of spit in my mouth. I don't know how you guys do this, but we love the show. So I took one for the team. And, you know, I'm going to be trying to do my best while Scott's gone, but he's going to be back soon. So I'm going to wrap it up for this week. And I can't wait, wait to welcome all of you back, as well as that great co-host, Scott King, back into the town square next week. Thanks for watching and listening to the Jim and Sam Town Square. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell, not dog bell, so you don't miss an episode. And if you're just listening to the podcast, please leave us a five-star review. We really appreciate it.